SoFi reports earnings on Tuesday before the bell, just one day away from this recording. And there's a lot we've seen in terms of anticipation. The stock is up over 40%. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing what I'm seeing out there from a sentiment perspective and why I think on the back of this move, SoFi can hit $13 to $14 per share. Let's jump right in. Okay, so in this video, I want to run through some news and posts that I've been seeing over the past week as we head into the earnings report. Just a reminder that I will be covering the earnings report live on this channel on Tuesday morning before the bell. We're going to be talking about the actual results in anticipation of the call, the call itself, and also analysis post-call. We're going to be inviting people from the SoFi community. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure that you join Tuesday morning. Now, last week, the stock climbed over 7%. Just last week alone, it's up 40% in the past month. And normally, these videos that I make on a weekly basis are very news-heavy videos, but this one is going to be very stock price action-oriented, very sentiment-focused. And the reason why is because I think FOMO is starting to kick in for a lot of folks, especially on the retail side. So the first thing that I want to put up on screen here is this post that I saw from Chris Hager and also from Tanner on the Robinhood analysis for retail buyers and sellers, what we noticed is a lot of the people who were selling into the strength from $750 all the way to $11, we saw a lot of retail dumping their stock. A lot of them are now buying back that stock. So to me, that reads like a sign of FOMO of these people are worried that actually this time is different. And actually, so if I can sustain that rally upwards this time, and now they're buying back in because they don't want to miss the boat. So let me first talk about the $13 to $14 price range. Like, where does that come from? Is it just clickbait where he's talking about? I shared my price prediction on the SoFi Weekly podcast on Friday. And I said that I wouldn't be surprised that on the back of a great earnings report, if this company were to go above $13, I think for a variety of different reasons that this can go above $13. So partially, it's a mix of technical factors. If you look at a three-year and a five-year chart, you'll see technical resistance levels that if it breaks through, I mean, we've broken 52-week highs consistently over the past week, but we haven't broken three-year highs yet. And so that's one part, right? If you look at the charts, but also on this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about short interest. I'm going to be talking about analyst upgrades, all of which add fuel to that fire, but ultimately a big part of this will be fundamentals based on whether the company reports some fantastic earnings, provides great guidance, and actually crushes their estimates. And on that point, I made an earnings prediction video earlier this week with all of my predictions on all the major metrics. And in fact, I've even listed it on a single post on X, so it's easy to digest. If you want my thought process for all of those earnings, make sure to check out that video. I'll attach it at the end of this one. And I also made this cheat sheet here because the reality is we're heading into an earnings report, which we know that SoFi always double beats and raises guidance, but it's a 17% short interest. Earnings whispers like 50% higher than what analysts are expecting than what SoFi's own guidance is. And I think that a lot of people here are really, really excited and have anticipation built for earnings. And that's both a positive and a negative thing, which I'll talk about. Now, earlier this week, I reposted this post that Chris had made with the updated short interest numbers as of October 15th. And I was surprised, quite frankly, to see that the short interest remains really elevated for SoFi, right? About 180 million shares sold short still. And this is really interesting, right? Because this is a company that's up 40% in the past month. You would think that a lot of these shorts would be covering, but in fact, majority of them are currently underwater on their positions. And despite that, they're still hanging on to these positions. And the reason that they're doing that is because they're banking on SoFi dumping after earnings and falling back to that, you know, $758 range as it's done in the past. But every day that passes, that becomes more and more of a risky proposition because you're going into this major catalyst and the sentiment seems to be shifting for this company, right? So there is a possibility that this time is different. And I say that with caution because I know that those are famous last words. But the fact of the matter is that where we stand right now puts an immense amount of pressure on short sellers to cover their positions because we've had an aggressive run up leading into earnings. And if we do have a beat and a raise and positive guidance, and we actually run up post earnings as well to 12, 13, $14, then these shorts will be even deeper underwater and they will be even more for forced to cover their positions, which is obviously good news for the bulls because it adds more fuel to the fire. So that's one aspect is this short interest powder keg that's on this side. The other aspect here is analysts and their price targets. Now, on Friday, we got a report that Dan Dola from Mizuo raised his price target from $12 to $14 per share. And that's interesting, right? Because he did this without even having seen the Q3 numbers. He did it in anticipation of the earnings. And I suspect that if the report goes well, many more analysts are going to increase their price targets upwards. 
Now, a part of this is simply due to just psychological factors. Like if I have a price target for $10 for SoFi when it's trading at seven, that's bullish. But if SoFi is trading at 11 and I still have a $10 price target, well, all of a sudden that's lower than what the stock is trading at. So I have to adjust upwards as the stock moves upwards, right? And then the other part of it is the fundamental aspect to say that analysts now have more information that they can plug into their models and then discount cash flow that back to say, okay, what is the valuation of this company and what should it be trading at right now? But what we do know is similar to the retail sentiment following price, obviously analyst price targets also follow that price. And all of this does from the analyst to the short interest to the stock rallying 40% of the past month is it puts more pressure on the single event on earnings for the company to crush expectations. More anticipation is being priced into that single event today than was ever before, right? Because you've had a lot of actions that have been taken. And there's a bigger risk of this being a sell the news event because SoFi has proven in the past that it's been unable to hold those gains after multiple rallies over the years. And then we joke about this, right? Like any gains that the company does make, it gives up very quickly. But I think that this time could be different simply because all of these ingredients are now in place. And the sentiment, I think, is shifting to the point where we'll have sustained rallies and break out to higher highs. Now, I posted earlier this week around some of my thoughts as we head into earnings from just a purely psychological short-term perspective, because we know in the short term, a lot of these moves are emotional. A lot of them are psychological more than they're value oriented. FOMO is a real thing. I mean, we're seeing it right now play out and it does kick in, right? People do feel that they're going to miss out on the next big thing, especially because this company has been flat for like two, three years. And so they've had a lot of time to accumulate and maybe neglect a little bit building up their positions. But the moment that this passes a sustained level, the moment that this has more price discovery, the moment that this breaks 52 week highs, like three or four days in a row, all of a sudden people have that FOMO and it leads to more violent moves upwards as well, right? And it's ironic because in a lot of cases, it's the same people who are bashing this stock six months ago now feel that they have to buy in at $11. And this is where I talk about this virtuous cycle. We've seen over the past several years, a vicious cycle with SoFi, right? We've seen several factors in a reciprocal relationship that contribute to a downward spiral. If an analyst downgrades a company, people sell that company and say it's going lower. That company hits a 52 week low. Um, short sellers pile onto that company. You have a ton of negative press and that leads to more analyst downward revision. And so you can see this downward spiral, this vicious cycle where because one thing happens, another thing happens that intensifies that downward move and serves as a trigger for a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth negative catalyst that takes the company further and further down. Now, by contrast, a virtuous cycle is this thing in reverse when we go up, right? Because we know that the sentiment will follow the price. The higher the stock price, the more enthusiastic people are, the more euphoric people are, and they're more, they're buying it heavier. And the more they're buying it, the more this thing breaks 52 week highs. And that leads to analyst upward revisions. And that leads to more institutional buyers. And that leads to more short covering and so on and so forth. So here in this post, I was simply highlighting this interrelated factors that contribute to these moves from purely a short-term psychological perspective. And in that post, I said, momentum is heating up for SoFi and we're seeing this virtuous cycle that I've been talking about for several weeks now in full swing. And I mean, I chalked up a diagram super quickly, but essentially here, I have price action being influenced by the market. So both retail and institutions alike, which then influences more price action and the reason why this is all happening now is because everybody is front running earnings. The market knows that the fourth quarter of gap profitability is going to be huge for SoFi and the narrative overall. And the main piece here that I didn't include in the diagram is short sellers because there's still 17% of the shares sold short for this company. Even if we just look at this diagram, right, the only line that goes in one direction is the one that's controlled by the company, right? The company releases financial results and those financial results are not really influenced by whatever analysts think or whatever retail thinks or or whatnot, or short sellers. But those financial results do in turn influence all of these other factors at play. And then outside of that, everything is related with each other. And that can go both ways. It can go downwards in a vicious cycle, or it can go upwards in a virtuous one. And this, I think, is why this time will be different, because we'll have enough momentum to sustain that rally, because we have the good fundamentals to back it up, right? We have four quarters of gap profitability, and we have everybody here trying to front run earnings. That's what's leading to this rally. I think guidance is going to 
to be very strong. I think the business is going to be stronger than expected in terms of what they report. And people know this and they're trying to front run it. And I think as all of those factors do come in, there's going to be fewer and fewer and fewer excuses that people have for this not to be a sustainably double digit company, right? For this not to be trading at 13, 14, 15 dollars. And of course, that remains to be seen. But on the flip side, just to remain somewhat objective, I will say that a lot of this rallying and the anticipation and the positive momentum and the euphoria online, I mean, just look at stock twits, all that does is it builds more and more and more pressure on this earnings. And if by any chance SoFi has a lackluster earnings report, it's going to get hit so much harder than it ever would have otherwise because it now has all of these baked in expectations. It's priced more to perfection today than it was a month ago, right? Because it had a 40% move in between. If they do come in and if they deliver some numbers that, you know, I'm forecasting them to deliver. And if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. I think that they're going to have a great chance of breaking through 52 week highs and breaking through some multi-year highs as well. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw this company in the 13 or $14 range because of the powder keg that is the shorts, because of these analysts that have to basically upgrade and because of those four quarters of gap profitability, which pretty much breaks down all of the bear cases, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. 13 and $14 is not that far away. Earnings is on Tuesday before the bell. I will be covering it on this channel live. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you on Tuesday morning.